Maybe a cow or a deer. How do we tell just from the bones? Is that a cow jaw? Seems too small to be a cow. Oh, hey, buddy. Hey, you be careful. Don't end up with your, like your friends here. Watch out for them coyotes and bears. I don't think they have wolves here. You've probably driven past it or seen it in the background of some photographs without knowing it. Boulder Mountain sits on the western edge of Capitol Reef National Park and the northern edge of Grand Staircase Escalante National Park. Being a flat-topped mountain, it doesn't stand out like the nearby Henry Mountains, but at 11,000 feet, it's equally high. I've been wanting to see what's on top for ages, and with the coronavirus going on in the middle of summer being too hot for the lower deserts of the park and monument, it seemed like the perfect time to check it out. Tearing down tires doesn't just improve traction and the ability to float over sand and snow, it also adds some extra cushioning to smooth the bumps and rocks on the trail. The drawback is that it can increase the potential for tire punctures or irreparable sidewall damage. Plus you need a way to air back up when you reach pavement. Hey, it's official. Now we're entering the National Forest. The first day was mostly getting on-site and finding a place to sleep. I visited the ranger station but found out it's not a ranger station anymore. It's a rentable cabin at $30 a night. That's a good deal compared to popular campgrounds, especially for groups. I'll put a link to it down in the description. If you've ever stayed there, let us know how it was. Looks like they're going that way. I'm going to continue up. That was one option, but I guess I got two hours to sunset. In case you're wondering how tough this trail is, there's a passenger car. I mean, it's bumpy, but bumpy as in it'll uh, rattle your teeth a little bit, but not quite um, bottom out your car, so it's not so bad. you want to avoid the mud. You just got to go slow through it so you don't slosh too much of it up out of the trail. When they're little ruts like this you can just go a little bit off to the side and not erode the trail too much. Yeah we want to find us a camp spot up here. We don't really want to be out in the middle of the meadow. A little bit of cover from the trees would be nice. I found a nice camping spot at Raft Lake, tucked behind a hill so people wouldn't see me. Okay, I have to show off this amazing campsite I found. This is up at Raft Lake. Campfire ring already there, so people have been here before, it's already been used. There's just a nice little level spot there, up against the trees, so least blocking me from the wind in one side. Kind of in this nice little depression to hopefully block wind, you know, from getting really bad all around me. Let me show you what the view's like from up here. This is my dinner view. Saw a guy fishing over there before. 
he's driven off. So I don't know if there's any fish in there. This is the end of the road. You can hike out there to Donkey Point, or I'm thinking of going north up here to explore a little bit. But what a great little spot. Not 100% hidden from the road, but 90% hidden from the road. There was a shepherd camp located on this hill to the north. His sheep were making noises all night long. Out in the distance, you can see Thousand Lake Mountain. I did some early fishing on Raft Lake in the morning. Cotton released about a foot long brown trout and saw more jumping in the middle of the lake. up to the highest point in the county it's not steep but when you get over 10,000 feet you get winded really fast I feel like I'm jogging it's really short not even a quarter mile it's up there but holy cow you gotta be careful when you're high in the mountains like this it's a lot more of a workout than you think it will be. Short hikes seem a lot tougher than they are. All right, here we are, Bluebell Knoll. Now it's official. There's Raft Lake where we were camping before. I parked in the road down here and here's where it joins the main road. And if you look way out there, those are the Henry Mountains peeking up. On the other side of the Aquarius Plateau, diving down to Capitol Reef and then back up to the Henry's. Can't really see anything else sticking out above the horizon here. Yeah, look at this terrain. Just flat, pine trees poking up, a few spots where water collects. It's a really interesting mountain. The further east you go, the more the trail slowly deteriorates. Not really bad, but the bumps make for slow going. However, there are lots of curious things to be seen across the top and some fabulous views from the rim. This old corral made out of some massive logs and uh, put up a new fence it looks like with a horseshoe for good luck maybe. I wonder how old that fence is with logs that big. You kind of see why they call it Boulder Mountain. It's just rocky meadows. Would have been cool if those were buffalo. Beautiful meadows though. I think the road goes and parallels them. Pleasant Creek Meadows are a good example of what it's like up here. Gentle rolling terrain and damp meadows surrounded by trees. Remember, we're on top of the mountain right now at about 11,000 feet. I notice most of the tire tracks now are ATVs and UTVs now rather than full-size vehicles like myself. Definitely some stuff here. Very cool. Bed springs. What do we got here. I wonder how old this is. Earlier I had seen on Google Earth that there was more man-made shapes behind the cabin as well. See over here, the ground had these big rectangular marks. Like an old foundation or something. So I think this is where the actual sawmill itself was. The area's all cleared out, covered in sawdust. I think this is where the mill was. If you look here, we've got 
got some uh, old timbers, whatever old concrete foundation that is. So the mill building might have been right here and all the sawing was going on there and then maybe back there was where they lived. I think I disturbed somebody's home when I was in the cabin. He's poking his head out at me right now. I think it's a yellow-bellied marmot. He's a good-sized one, too. Sorry, buddy. I'll leave you alone, okay? As old as I think that building is, that roof, I think, is much newer. I think that was put on there to preserve it. Maybe that's why there was that tar paper off to the side as they... And then all the chimney right there, they might have pulled everything off the roof and put that brand new roofing on there to see if they could preserve this a bit longer. I believe this is also a cliff, so uh, we're not going to get too close to the edge. Oh, yeah. There we go. Let's go over here. Okay. This was one of my whole entire goals for this trip was to see something like this. Right up ahead there, the Red Rock is a southern portion of Capitol Reef. I believe through the gap here we can see the northern end close to the visitor center. And then the road comes down here. Of course, off in the distance there is the, the Henry Mountains that you can always see everywhere. In the mid-ground is all the mesas around Hanksville. I forget what they are. This is where all the water from uh, this end of the highlands of the Aquarius runs down through the gap. And I was curious if you could actually climb down here, but it doesn't look like it. It goes down and has a pretty steep, steep drop off right there. So unless you were rock climbing, I don't think it's happening. Very interesting. Taking this meadow back should lead us right back to the truck. Man, talk about a, some gorgeous scenery. Great Western Trail. No, oh, wait, does it go through the gap? Oh, maybe it is passable. That would be insane. I want to do some research. I'm sure there's crazy through hikers that have been down the Great Western Trail and they may know. There's another one. So this is how rock stacking is supposed to be. Guide you, keep you on the trail. You should be able to see the next car and from the one you're currently standing at. So we got one there. I can see another one at the base of those trees. Keep getting winded so easily just walking up here. And in the age of coronavirus, it freaks the crap out of me. Thinking that my lung capacity is down. I have to keep reminding myself, we're at a high altitude right now. Over 10,000 feet. I mean, I live close to 4,000 and that's considered high altitude by many. And I'm acclimated to that, but man, 10,000 takes it out of you a lot more than you think it would. Seems like I remember reading that somewhere. Going up to 6,000, 8,000, that's not so tough. And I've noticed that at home doing hikes. A few thousand isn't a big thing, but you cross that 10,000 mark and holy cow, it gets a lot harder. Oh, gorgeous mountaintop in those clouds. After that great viewpoint to the east, I decided to turn around here and not go to the end of the road. Later I would learn of a truck that got stuck just past the rim that I had decided to skip. There's a great video on YouTube of the guys that headed out there to recover it. One bad thing about the cattle grazing is what they do to these marshy shorelines of mountain lakes. Those hooves just tear the crap out of that.
terrain around here is really weird and really annoying to walk on. All the plants grow in these weird little mounds where it's obvious that their roots and everything are holding the mounds together. All these mounds stick up about three or four inches over the ground, so when you're walking, you have to walk in between all of them. Otherwise you could uh, twist your ankle. But I'm wondering, is this what happens naturally? Or is this from all the sheep and cattle grazing? Because there's sheep hooves all in the middle of it. Here we go. Closed off since 1983. And it answers why our uh, ground is so weird. It's definitely not from the uh, grazing. It must just be something about the, the way the moisture affects the ground. This is Spectacle Lake and oh my god, it is horribly low. It's supposed to be one big lake connected through this little narrow bridge that gives it the name Spectacle, but it's actually three lakes now. It's so low. That's the dam on the end over there. This is the back side of the dam. This is the part that should all be underwater. And you can see that the uh, shoreline would be right over here next to these little trees. Thing is, it looks like it's been low for a long time. This isn't just like this season, because we're really not that deep into the season. Check out this cabin. I don't think this guy is actually here. He might be off on a hike. So we'll just poke our heads in the cabin. Going more, but I don't want to get hot to virus. The wind gust got so strong that that weird little windmill over there started turning. I'm gonna go check it out. The little concrete pad with the four bolts in it reminds me of. Uh, the same thing that was up at Raft Lake. Platform's almost identical to the one that was at Raft Lake. But what does it do? It locks a lot newer than it looks. Maybe this is still in use. Hey, guess what I just found? It had a sign. The little piece of wood was a face down sign. I thought it was covering up uh, machinery. This windmill pumps air into the lake to help prevent winter fish kill. Okay, fish kill. It was built for your benefit. Please protect it. Well, cool. It's basically just an air pump like you'd have on an aquarium at home. Weird. Another gorgeous view off the back of Boulder Mountain. So now we're looking south. And if we look out in the distance here, you can just see a few farms and towns. That's Boulder, the city of Boulder itself. And that leads up into this area right here. That's Lower Calf Creek Falls would be right about there in the center. And the hog's back driving out to it. And then if you head up the uh, Slick Rock area is right there, right before it goes behind the ridge. That's the uh, Head of the Rocks, I believe, Overlook area. And now that far ridge off in the distance there that goes all the way along is 50 Mile Mountain. And then right at the end when it drops off, you can just barely see in the haze that's Navajo Mountain down in Arizona. And then all this over area over here to the left, uh, I believe goes to the Burr Trail and to Capitol Reef and that type of area. I have not explored that very much, so I'm not familiar with all those little canyons. But this gives you a good look of the 
eastern side of the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. And from up here, it's a comfortable 68 degrees in the pine trees. And look at those cliffs, those are stunning. I've always seen them in the distance and I'm like, oh, that looks interesting. You don't see how, notice how big they are until you're up above them. trailers are a good sign that the road from here on out is going to be a lot more gentle than it has been. It's Jacob's Reservoir. This old bad boy. You yeah, don't see many half tracks around anymore. That's not quite so PC. Six in line. Looks like uh, four seized and two drowned. Look at the old carburetor. Uh, I wonder who left that here and how long ago. Very cool. Another great camping spot. I'm two roads removed off the main road. But it's still really crowded. I got me a neighbor right across the way here. But they're pretty quiet. They're out kayaking that lake over there. But it's nice up here. There's a secret lake back there. That marsh is probably mosquito heaven, but they haven't been bothering me so far. I think it's probably because of the cows nearby that every now and then you hear one of them moo, and that's the biggest drawback. It's Friday night, so all the uh, weekenders are starting to show up, so I don't have the whole place to myself anymore. But it's all right, my site is isolated. Lupins? Cows just tearing up the shoreline. Nice panorama of that. As the colors start to change in the clouds, it could be fantastic. The ATV makes more noise than the truck. Forest Service clears deadwood from time to time, and in winter when the risk is low, they burn the piles of trees. Although this may be related to all the recent logging in the area.
approaching Hay Lakes Flat. There's not really any campgrounds in the area. It's just all dispersed forest roads through this really interesting country. But those guys got their passenger car up here. So it just shows you it's not quite so intense. A lot of ATVs. That is a big crowd. Way off in the distance there is a really tall mountain range. That's the Tusher Mountain Range. When I went to Fremont Indian State Park, that was just right over here on the north end and uh, drove up and saw a few of the mines. That was probably right about here, at the north end of the range. Like I said, I'd really like to check out that whole uh, mountain range there, but it's amazing how high they stick up above the surrounding area. This is Roundy Spring. Looks like they used to have it fenced off to keep uh, the cows from getting into the spring itself. It looks like it still kind of does its job, but there's still hoof prints in there. Just a trickle coming out. And then it goes down here, and this is where the cows are allowed to drink from. Meanwhile, it looks like, I don't know if there used to be also be a cabin here. I mean, if you were going to set up a cabin right next to a spring, is where I'd want to set up my cabin. There's uh, some history here that's almost completely erased now. There is actually something here. I think it used to be a ranger station, but I don't know if it's manned anymore, but they do have a truck that looks like official government truck. Uh, I rent a reservation. I was wondering if there would be a bathroom option here, but I didn't think so. Still, that's cool. Rent a hut. I like that. Looks like it's made out of old shipping containers. Little bathroom off to the side. Kind of a cool idea. I'd like to see more of that type of thing. I think this trail is also a snowmobile trail in the winter, so this could be like a really kick ass snowmobile stop for a group. I'd like to see more little uh, remote huts like that set up through the uh, forests. I wasn't crazy about thinking it was a ranger station. Looks like it used to be. I must have changed it over to a uh, private-public partnership for people that want to stay up in the mountains. Like I say though, I think that's cool. Yeah. Stuff like this is just not used anymore. I don't think it's because there's no demand. I just think that they don't bother refilling them and stuff like that. Whether it's information handouts, trail registers. Just feels like for the last couple decades, the National Forest and a lot of the public lands have kind of been on cruise control. They don't put in the effort for recreation anymore, which is weird because recreation seems to get higher and higher. Whenever I do see those trail registers, They've always got so many signatures that you have to squeeze your name in somewhere else. I don't know. I wish they would put more emphasis on the uh, tourism again. Not a fatal fall, but I don't want to go down either. Oh, check that out. <laughs> That's fantastic. Whew. 
south end of the Aquarius Plateau. About ready to head back down into the desert. Now there is a trail up here that I parked at at the other end of the barbed wire that drops down. There's a big camping area right here. A lot of lakes. You can drive up below from uh, Escalante. And I think that trail that's way down there uh, at least down to those. You know what I was saying about the uh, trail register? Things are always empty. our two sure mountains again and coming down south smooths out Widstow's down there in the valley now we're on the other side of the tree coming down this valley uh, goes towards Ruby's Inn behind this hill up here way off in the distance there is highway 12 and I believe this is Bryce Canyon National Park should be right about in that area. And what we are on the back of right now, this ridge goes on quite a ways and the far end of it is Powell Point, which is another place I've always wanted to check out, but we're not gonna be doing this time around. But yeah, going from seeing Capitol Reef to Bryce Canyon. how quickly the forest changes once you start dropping altitude. Temperature's gone up 11 degrees. Pine trees, I think we're in, I think these are the uh, Ponderosa pines, not 100% sure. But it looks like a completely different place than we used to be. And it is getting toasty warm real quick and we're not even at the bottom yet. Getting down into Southern Utah. I mean, we were always here, but this is what I think is Southern Utah. The uh, Grand Staircase Escalante area. Wait, hang on. There's a place right here I want to stop at before we drive home. So right now we are at Head of the Rocks. Gorgeous stop on Highway 12 that we saw from the cliffs over by Rim Lake just last night, which... Sorry I got my wide angle lens, I can't zoom in any closer, but that was right there. Those big, giant, gorgeous cliffs. Little tiny thing on the horizon now. That's what I say, I always see those in the distance. I'm like, huh, that looks interesting. But you don't really understand how big they are until you see them up close. Meanwhile, going from 70 degrees to 95 degrees. It's hot down here, dry. Still so beautiful though. I got takeout at Hell's Backbone Grill and I didn't want to eat it at the city park so I drove down the Burr Trail a little bit to eat my food. Had to sit in its uh, to-go bag for about an extra 10-15 minutes but as a result this is my view while I got to eat. That's the Burr Trail going down below there. You can see it just goes up through that narrow narrow canyon up there. This trip is not to do this trail and I'm heading back home from here now. But uh, definitely gonna have to do this one in the near future because, man, what a fantastic drive that would be going up through there. Okay, I drove to the bottom just to kind of check out and see what that was like. That was amazing just going through the first part of that. So I am definitely gonna make a video of the drive through that. That is fantastic, that's just magical. I guess this is the closest I'll be coming to um, stay tuned for more.